What's up, people? Terry here with Blunt Trips, and we are coming to you from Centennial, Colorado. It's a suburb outside Denver, and we were at the memorial of the Columbine victims. Daniel was heading to a nearby park to eat his lunch carrying a Dr. Pepper and his food when the gunman approached the school. They sprayed bullets at anyone in their path. He was shot in the chest, abdomen, and leg and died on the sidewalk a few steps from safety. While Kyle was working on a computer in the school's library, the gunman entered and started shooting. He was the first student killed in the library. He had a special interest in the military and showed great respect for men and women in uniform. Bernal was killed by gunfire during the Columbine's massacre on April 20, 1999. According to witness Emily Wyant, who was hiding under the same table as Bernal, the shooter slammed his hand twice down on the table above them and said, Pickaboo, before fatally shooting Bernal in the head. Her family was not informed of her death until two days after the massacre. Matthew was studying at the library with his friends Isaiah Scholl and Craig Scott, Rachel Scott, the first victim's brother. All three were hiding under table 16 when one of the shooters approached table 16. He found Isaiah under the table and called the second shooter over by making a racist comment. The first shooter then tried to drag Isaiah off the, the table, but he struggled to do so. Shooter 2 approaches Isaiah, kneels down, and shoots him in the chest, killing him. Then shooter 1 shoots Matthew in the chest, killing him also but Craig was left uninjured when fire alarms went off and startled the attackers who fled. John spent his lunch hour in the library daily studying. He was there the day the gunmen stormed school. Hiding under a table, he welcomed a girl he didn't know into his hiding place when she grew scared where she was hiding and he held her hand to comfort her when the killer started shooting people in the library. Then the shooters came to their table without bending to see who was under the table. Shooter 2 opened fire on John and the girl he was with, injuring them both with a blast from the shotgun. Then Shooter 1 came around the table and shot John at point-blank range in the head, killing him almost instantly. Rachel was shot while eating lunch with her friend Richard Gastaldo on the lawn outside of the school's library. She was killed by Shooter 2 with multiple gunshot wounds to her head, chest, arm, and leg. According to Richard's first account after awakening from a coma, Richard told his parents the last account of Rachel's life as being mocked for her faith. He also said he heard Rachel crying before taking the fatal bullet to the head as he lies unconscious. Dave was in the upstairs hall trying to get students safely hidden in classrooms when he was shot from behind by both shooters. He was hit in his head.
DePooter was one of the 56 students and staff in the Columbine High School library during the shooting where most of the action took place in. Corey was hiding under a desk where he was studying when he was shot three times by Shooter 1 in the neck, chest, and left arm with a Tech 9. His injuries killed him. He was the last victim of the attack. When the shooters entered the library, Kelly was hiding beside a table with other girls who she had been sitting with, including Lauren Townsend. However, due to the lack of hiding space under the table, she was partially visible. At one point, Shooter 1 fired under the table, injuring two other girls hiding under the table. He fired his gun again, killing Lauren. Both gunmen reloaded their weapons. The shooters then moved away from Kelly's table, moving to another table where they shot another victim, then killed John Tomlin before coming back to the girls' table. Coming up from behind, Shooter 2 shot Kelly in the back with his sawed-off shotgun. Her body was found on the floor near that of Lauren Townsend. Isaiah was studying in the library with his friends Matt Kector and Craig Scott, the first victim's brother, when the shooters entered the room. The three boys hid under the same table listening to the sounds of the gunman destroying the library and shooting other people. Isaiah was a well-known athlete and someone whom the shooters had problems with before. When Shooter 1 saw him hiding beneath the table, he called Shooter 2 over. They flanked the table on either side, then Shooter 2 made a racist comment towards Isaiah and tried to pull him out from under the table. When that failed, Shooter 1 opened fire, killing Isaiah. Isaiah died from a gunshot wound to the chest. Lauren was in the library with her friends when the shooting began. She hid beneath the table with her friends when the teacher told everyone to get down. Finding herself beside a frightened friend, Lauren put her arm around her, drew her closer, and told her everything would be okay. After several minutes of hearing the gunmen taunt and then shoot other people hiding in the library, Shooter 1 came to Lauren's table. He opened fire, injuring two of her friends. He fired again as fast as his weapon would shoot, hitting Lauren several times. A few minutes later, Shooter 2 came back around the table and shot beneath it again, hitting Lauren again, but she was already dead. She died on the floor of the library from multiple bullets and shotgun wounds to the head, chest, and lower body. Lauren was shot more than any of the victims. Daniel was in the library at the time the shootings occurred just a floor below where he was. When substitute teacher Patty Nielsen entered the library, she told everyone to hide under the tables and Masur was one of the 56 students who listened. When Shooter 2 was approaching his table, Masur pushed a chair in front of him as a possible attempt to knock him over. Outraged, he was shot in the face by Shooter 2 while hiding under one of the tables. Masur died under the table where he had hidden. The transcripts from the 911 call shows that Shooter 2 taunted Daniel before killing him saying, nice glasses. Steve was hiding under one of the small computer tables in the library near one of the surviving victims when the shooting began. Shooter 2 shot Steve in the neck with a sawed-off shotgun. Steve died in the library, the youngest victims of the Columbine Massacre.
This is the grave of Coach William David Dave Sanders. He was the third victim that day. When gunmen started firing outside the school, Dave ran to the cafeteria and sounded the alarm. He, along with two of the school's janitors, helped get more than 100 students out of the path of danger by herding them away from the shooters. Dave saved untold numbers of lives that day. By the time the gunman arrived, the cafeteria was nearly empty, thanks to him. He was in the upstairs hall trying to get the students safely hidden in classrooms when he was shot from behind by both shooters. He was hit in his head. He managed to get himself into the science lab where he bled to death waiting for help that 911 dispatchers told students were on their way. They never showed. Two teachers and one student were in a room with Sanders as they tried to revive him. Student Deidre Kassidra uh, Kakira, I'm sorry if I got that name wrong, posted a sign in the window, one bleeding to death. For three hours, the sign was ignored. He was a huge fan of bands like Green Day and Blur. His last words were reported to be, tell my family I love them. Since his death, he had a, a softball field at Columbine and a scholarship named after him to honor his memory and posthumously receive the Arthur Ashe Award for Courage. This is where Dave, William Dave, David Sanders, lays for eternity. This is the grave of Rachel Joy Scott, the first victim of the Columbine Massacre. Rachel was 17 at the time, and she was a high school senior. Rachel was an aspiring writer and actress with summer plans to go take a trip to build homes. Two weeks prior to the shooting, she had a lead role as an alternative character with a sharp wit and kind heart. The play was titled Smoke in the Room, for which one of the killers ran the spotlight. Coincidentally, she knew that shooter from a class they shared in 1999, and that killer and Rachel were members of the Columbine Theater Production Club. They have known each other since kindergarten. The shooter ran audio for a talent show a month and a half before where Rachel performed. She has since been the subject of several books and inspiration for Rachel's Challenge, a nationwide school outreach program for prevention of teen violence based on her life and writings. This is where Rachel lies for eternity. Rachel Scott is Corey Tyler DePooter. Corey was the last victim of the attack that day. Corey was a former wrestler who loved to hike, golf, hunt, and fish. He loved wrestling, golf, and inline skating, but fishing was his passion. He had recently taken a maintenance job at a golf club 
to save up to buy a fishing boat with a friend. He had his wisdom teeth removed that year and was upset that the procedure had forced him to miss school. Someone Corey used to fish with said, it was the times we didn't do well that his personality really shined. Another friend said of him, when you're going fishing or camping, I know he's going to be there watching and making sure you're doing everything right. This is where Cory DePooter lies for eternity. <laughs>